This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Yes, welcome to Race in Action today. And we're back at Lime Rock Park at to the Vintage Festival. And believe me, tonight's show is going to be about the big war sedans and sports cars. As you're going to find it very interesting to see what these cars are all about. And the people who make it happen at this absolutely gorgeous event. Yes, this 1964 Corvette is a prime example of a big bore sports car. Yes, we have Tom Cotter with us who owns this absolutely gorgeous silver Corvette 1964. And I'll tell you, I bet you know a little bit about this car, Tom. You know, this has been a race car since it was new. That roll bar was put in 1965. And what's unusual about this car is that of all the other Corvettes running here, they have four barrel carburetors. This has got a fuel injected engine, for fuel injected 327. So uh, it looks nostalgic. It looks cool. It doesn't necessarily run as fast as those guys, but I've got the only one here, and I feel. Yeah, I, I heard they were very temperamental. Yeah, we had a little bit of a problem yesterday. There's a cable that operates it, the, the pump in there, and it broke. But well, we fixed it. It seems to have solved the problem. But I bought this about six years ago. Raced it on the West Coast for several years in the Monterey Historic Races and Sears Point. Just brought it east. Now it's the, this is the first time of racing on the East Coast. Where do you call home? Davidson, North Carolina. It took us uh, whoa. it took us about 14 hours to drive here uh, Wednesday. I know the area. I spent some time down in Charlotte, and uh, that's a pretty town. David. Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's NASCAR country, and I'm a sports car. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> How did you end up down there? Now, where is the closest track for you down there? VAR, and that's a, that's a neat place to go. Yeah. Virginia National Raceway. But I'm a Long Islander, and I. Grew up racing Bridgehampton, Lime Rock, Pocono, Briar, oh, and I so miss you, this area. You've been the gamut here, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I, I miss the cool weather. I miss uh, the, the, the crisp lobster uh, and all these. I miss the New England accent. I miss people saying, ka. <laughs> now, tell me, you must, you must have really got to know this track good then. Yeah, I, I used to instruct on this track 25 years ago, you know, so... Uh, it's coming back to an old friend. Although I'm a four-cylinder guy, I raced Datsun 510s, Pintos, Mini Coopers, uh, Sprites, and a Morris Minor here. I've never raced a V8. Right? It's no. a whole different ball game. Uh, you know, I saw a Datsun 510 over here. I said, who owns that car? You know, is that's, that yours? The, that's a buddy of mine. We used to race 510s at Bridgehampton back in the uh, 70s. And he, we both still have our original 510s, you know, no almost kidding. 40 years later. I have a son that has two of them, and he, and he autocrosses them. Yeah. But I got to talk to him because we, I got to catch this disease. Yeah, this, this, is, <laughs> this is like a needle in the vein. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, think about it. Drive 15 hours to get here. Haul, there's my truck filled with stuff, hauling a car on a big trailer. Cost thousands just to get some laps on our track. Like, boing, it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'll tell you, though, it's a wonderful sport. I see it growing. Too. Uh, it seems like it's getting bigger and bigger. My son is a junior in college at Wake Forest, and uh, he's going to be here in a little while. And he's the next generation, and he's already started to race my old Mini Cooper. So, yeah, we're, we're passing the torch. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you for having a word with us, and uh, we're going to have to keep an eye out for you out there. I got a <laughs> feeling you do well with this, uh, this ground pounder. Well, it, it looks good, if nothing else. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You were great. Thank you. Yes, we have Frank Grimaldi with us, owns this gorgeous Camaro, number 80. I don't know nothing about this car, but I got a feeling you do. I know a little bit about it. This is a 1968 Camaro. It really never saw any road miles. The original owner made a race car out of it from the dealer. And in fact, Skip Barber was the first driver of this car, and he ran it at the Briar Trans Am and finished seventh in 1968. It was then sold to Viper Racing, and I bought it from Viper Racing in 1970. And I ran it for about five years in SCCA races mostly. Now, in SCCA, was it like an A sedan or it something? It was an A sedan in SCCA, 
And uh, in fact, I won the Northeast Division National Championship in 73 with this in A sedan. Wow, this car's got quite a history. It really does. I made the mistake of getting rid of it in 75, and 20 years later, I got it back. Wow. That, you, you're lucky you got a second I, chance. Uh, I am, absolutely, and I've had great fun with it ever since. Now, has the car always been painted this color scheme? Viper Racing painted it this color, and in fact, when I bought it, I couldn't afford to repaint it, so I left it. And <laughs> it's been this color ever since. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the car is really something, and I, I see you're really taken to this place, too. Well, I've been coming here since 1961, uh -huh. and um, I just love this track. It's a great equalizer. You know, cars that have power get equalized with cars that have handling. So you have some real good races. Oh, absolutely. We love this place, uh, I'll tell you. And this is my favorite event of the year. This is a great event. You've got such a selection of cars, and they really are all special cars. Absolutely. I mean, just to be here, you're a winner. You know, there's no question right. about that. That's right. Well, Frank, we want to thank you, and I hope I know you're going to do well, but I think, judging by that smile, you're going to have more fun about it. That's exactly right. It doesn't matter where I finish. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. My you, pleasure. You were great. <laughs> thanks. Jim Peterman and Cliff Ryan are here with this gorgeous black. Mustang and I'm going to tell you I was watching this car out in the racetrack and I'm very impressed now I'm told that You actually own this car now. I just bought it from this from gentleman Jim. here Yeah, I bought it a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago and Jim agreed to bring it down here for me and Be my crew for the weekend and just show me the way around the car and, uh, and I'm racing it here with my son And then we're we are doing this weekend and we're heading off to Watkins Glen with it next weekend Now tell me how do you like Lime Rock? Oh, it's fantastic. It's, I mean, I'm going to steal an American word here, and it's awesome. Wow. We love this place, but we're from this area, you know, uh, and we're used to the tight track. It is tight, but, it, you know, the Mustangs do well here. Yeah, it's a very tight track. It's like a mix of a couple of tracks in the U.K., and I normally race a Jaguar XJS in the U.K., so this is a completely different ball game. So that's home, U.K.? Yeah, home is in U.K. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. Wow. When I go over there, I have to look you up. Absolutely. <laughs> now we're going to talk to Jim about the history of this car. Yeah, it's been a race car since 1974, uh, American sedan, uh, SCCA race car. I received it, uh, bought it in 1999, uh, started racing it in 2000, so I had it for 11 years, and it was time to, time to move on. So. Um, Really glad that I that I sold it to a person as such, such as uh, enthusiastic as Cliff and uh, really knows what he's doing on the racetrack. He races a Jag in England. So. Yeah. yeah, I was watching him. He uh, he knows how to get around here. Yeah, yes he does. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Mustangs are a favorite item of ours. We're Mustang guys actually. And uh, every time we see one, you know, we kind of drool. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's, uh, and uh, I like the notchbacks. You don't see too many of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's strange. The notchbacks were ra actually raced very early on, you know, before the Shelby cars. Yeah. And uh, you don't see many of them. No, I see more and more. There's there's a few here this weekend, but uh, yeah, usually you see the Shelby fastbacks at, at uh, vintage races. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for your help uh, in giving us the history of this car. It's always great. And uh, we look forward to catching you out in that racetrack. Thanks a lot. Thank you. you are excellent. Thank you. Good luck. Cliff really handled this car well, especially in the rain. And believe me, it was just an absolute gorgeous sight to see this Mustang out in this Lime Rock track. And it just looked right at home. Yes, we have Alan Raymond with us who owns this gorgeous Fiat Arbaugh. And I'll bet you know a little bit about this car, Alan. Well, uh, I can tell you the story of Mr. Abart very briefly. Mr. Abart is the Italian equivalent of Carroll Shelby. He was uh, a tuner, if you wish, and he took uh, basic Fiat cars. This is a basic Fiat 600, um, and gradually converted them into, into little bombas, like they say in Italy. And this car I've had for nearly 10 years. I found it in Denver, Colorado. And it was already a race car, and I've been uh, 
racing it ever since in Canada and the U.S. And this is my, I don't think, fifth or sixth visit to Lime Rock, which is a fantastic venue. Absolutely. We love this place. And where do you call home? Home is in Quebec, uh, a little place called Knowlton, not very far from the Vermont border. Where's your home track then? The home track would be Tremblant. Uh, they used to call it saint jovit north of Montreal. It used to be a Formula One track back in the 60s and 70s. It's a wonderful, wonderful track, up, down, up and down, very hilly, and uh, we'll be there at the end of the month for the uh, uh, fall finale. So you go all over the country? Well, uh, not all over, but uh, the farthest I've been was uh, Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, a few weeks ago, and and we won uh, in our category in the 1,000cc, which is the first time I win anything. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was the heat. It was so hot. It was Now, that's a street course. That's a street course. It's the only vintage street course in North, North America. Excuse my fumbling here. Um, Did you like it though? I love it. Street? I love it. It's run in, in a place called Shenley Park. It's a park uh -huh. downtown Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. And for I don't know, nearly 30 years. Next year, I think the 30th anniversary, they run this. This they close the park, of course, mm -hmm. and they run this race. And you've got trees and uh, sidewalks and walls and uh, uh, hay bales. You got to be really careful so you lift off. But the atmosphere. There's 200,000 people who show up. Uh, it's, it's, it's free for the public, for charity. It's a wonderful event. Wow, I'll have to get to that event. I heard a lot about it. Now tell me, what group are you in today? I'm in group five, <clears throat> although I started in group two. Now, uh, group two is sports racers of the 50s. Does this look like a sports racer to you? I wouldn't think no, so. No. So I was running with the likes of Chaparral's and Jaguar D-Type and a couple of Maseratis and Ferraris. And oh, so you were in good company. It's very flattering, very <laughs> flattering. I even, I, even passed, I even passed the Maserati, but I think he was really taking it easy. Oh, but boy. But then I asked the organizer, <laughs> Mr. Smith, who does uh, a wonderful job. I said, Murray, please, you know, could you, could you put me in five with the other little guys? And he said, no problem. So here I am in group five. Well, we're going to keep an eye out for you. I got a feeling you're going to do well. And and I've seen this car before. You really get around this place good. I love this place. I love well, it. we do too, and uh, we hope you come every year. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, hospitality and the nice weather too. Thanks a lot, Alan. Thank you. You were great. Thank you. Yes, you could say Alan really has a great time out there with that Fiat. Believe me, don't be fooled by the size of that car can really get around this track and believe me he uh, does an excellent job yes moving over a car we have adam simmons with this gorgeous number 17 mustang that has some uh i'll tell you this car looks very familiar to me and i bet you know a little bit about it yeah um the car is a uh, uh, the 67 Trans Am car, it's a replica because the original car got uh, screwed up into a little ball uh, at Riverside in 67. Um, I built the car uh, 10 years ago and uh, I raced it throughout, uh, throughout Europe and we've been over and uh, raced in the, U uh, in the US a couple of times. Um, we've raced uh, Sebring, Daytona and we're here for Lime Rock weekend and uh, Walk Watkins Glen next weekend. So, Where do you call home? Um, I'm from the UK. Uh, from uh, from Sussex in England. Wow, I'm impressed. It's funny. It's funny coming up um, up uh, up Connecticut and uh, Massachusetts. They're all very familiar names around here. So it's it's kind of funny. Now tell me. I mean, you don't see many American cars like this there, do you? In the UK, yeah. There's there's quite a few. They're they're real popular. Camaros, Mustangs, Barracudas. Will you race it there too or not? Oh yeah, it's raced for um, pretty much all the uh, UK tracks. Uh, Spa, I um, hope to do Nürburgring one of these days. Yeah, we got um, Dijon, raced at Dijon uh, last year. Yeah. Wow, we're impressed, but I, I'll have to tell you, Adam, we're Mustang guys. And uh, believe me, we follow these cars very closely. Excellent, only way to be. <laughs> I see, I see though, there, there's some Camaros here today. They giving you trouble out in the track? They are actually, yeah. Um, 
The car's built up to, uh, to UK specification, so it's not quite as fast as some of you US guys. Well, you got to watch these guys. They like to uh, jazz the motors up a little. They do, but um, they're, they're pretty forgiving. They understand, you know, <laughs> us uh, old slow limeys. <laughs> well, Adam, we want to thank you for having the interview. You were great, and I know you're going to have some fun here this weekend. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Adam coming from the UK didn't waste any time to have some fun. And boy, I'll tell you, he enjoyed driving that Mustang, and it was just great to have him here. Yes, we have Malin Craft with us with this gorgeous Arbot 750. And I'll tell you, I never get to see these cars. they got to be pretty rare. Am I correct? Yes, you're right. They are quite rare. There's maybe a handful in the United States. How did you get this car? Um, I found it in an ad in Auto Week about 1985. I called up a friend of mine. We went out to Rochester and picked it up. It was in my house the next morning. Where do you call home? I live in Norfolk, Connecticut. Oh, okay. So this is your home track. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen this car before up here at, during the event, and, and you always just do a great job with it. Yeah, well, this year I put the wrong brake pads on it, so it's out for the rest of the weekend. But Oh, is that right? You had a problem? I can't stop. Yeah, well, that's, that could, that's a problem. Now, <laughs> yeah, tell me. There's a sharp right-hand turn at the end of the straight. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, you, you, you've been racing this car a while. Do you go to different tracks in the country? I used to. I really don't anymore because I can run uh, like three three VSCCA events here, and I usually run this event every year. I've done this. This is I've, I've been 27 years out of a possible 20, possible 29 at this event. Mm -hmm. Not always with this car, but mostly with this one. Have you ever run into another car like it? Yeah, um, there, there's a uh, guy that collects that collects Porsches. Um, he's got I think he has two in this body style. So. Uh, and I can't. I had a street going version that I restored, and that, that ended up out of the country when I finished it. But, you know. Well, I'll tell you, you need to be commended. You always keep this car gorgeous. Whenever I see it, it, it looks like it's brand new. Don't look too close. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for having a word with us, and uh, hope you get straightened out with the car. And I'm sure we're going to see you in the future. Yeah, you probably will. Okay, man. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. Thank this Fiat 750 with a Zagato body is really something special. You just never see these cars. Yes, we have Patrick Donovan who owns this absolutely gorgeous yellow Fiat Arbot with a Zagato body. I don't know much about this car, but I got a feeling you do. It's 1958 um, Zagato body. It's all aluminum, um, hand formed. Um, been a race car for 20 some odd years. Been doing this particular race for about 23 years. Um, runs great. Fun to drive. I mean, I don't see these cars. Are they rare? They are very rare. There's probably um, a handful left in this country. Most of them are in um, Japan and Europe. And there's only I don't know, maybe 30 of them left. Now, how big is the motor? This one's has 900 cc. What group are you in? Group two. Yeah, how do you find it? Um, the smallest car in Group 2. <laughs> the smallest car with the smallest engine. and uh, Against Lola's, Chaparral's with V8s in them. Hey, you're in good company. Uh, oh, yeah, it's great company. I don't know why they put you in that group, though. We have no idea. Street cars, you know, race cars of the 50s. And so this is one of the cars. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you, the car is surely interesting. I, I just never see these cars. I mean, uh, it's a joy to see one, and I like the style. It's, it is. It's a pretty car. It's a, um, it attracts a lot of attention here, you know, and um, a lot of pictures taken, it seems. Yeah. Well, they don't see them. You know, no, when, don't when see people them. don't see cars, they're, they're interested. Yep, they are. Very interesting. Now, in your travels, have you come across any? Well, with, you know, mailing... Um, myself, we race here a lot. Um, there are a couple others running around, but not many. Most of them have been put away or sold to um, you know collectors who don't bring them out. Where do you call home, Pat? Um, little, little Compton, Rhode Island. 
Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite area in the summer down in that beach area, yeah, I'll tell you. It's great down there. It's a it's beautiful. I love to go to Galilee and looking at the size of me, you can tell that eating is right on the top of priority, right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> well, we want to thank you, Patrick, right. for talking with us and uh, hope you do well here. But I know one thing from that smile, you're certainly going to have some fun. Oh, yeah, it'll be a great time. It's always fun. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You were great. This Triumph sedan is really a rare car, and believe me, I've never seen one before. Yes, we have Butch Gilbert with us who owns this Triumph race car, and I'll tell you, I don't see many of these cars, and I bet you could tell me a little bit about this car. It's the only one that was built for Trans Am racing back in 1971 by Kaz Kasner for the Triumph factory. Yeah, they ran a 2.5 series where they ran a, a bunch of small sedans against each other, Alphas, uh, Triumphs, BMWs, uh, uh, Datsun 510s and stuff, and uh, this was one of the only six-cylinder cars in the series. Oh, really? I, I tell you, I never see this model. What model is it? It's called a Triumph Vitesse. They uh, were going to import them in the United States, so they built with a six-cylinder motor in them in England in 19... Well, actually, they started making them in 62, and they... Uh, and they stopped making them in 71 when this car was built. And, uh, and so they stopped the production and didn't import the cars. So the car is Trans Am history? Correct. It ran four races in the Trans Am series in 1971. Well, you know, one of our favorite sons here, Bob Sharp, uh, used to run in that series. And, uh, of course, the, everyone knows the story about uh, the other Datsun cars. That's right. And... Uh, so this, uh, this qualified next to uh, Sharp, I believe, uh, once uh, in the same row. And unfortunately, they didn't get a lot of uh, uh, development time in the car, and they sold it. And a fellow raced it in SECA uh, up through 88, and then sold the car, and it went vintage racing. And it's raced every year since 1971. Wow, that's interesting. Where are you from, Butch? I'm from uh, Wesley, California. Wow, this is quite a trip, huh? Uh, I love this track. It's uh, a lot of fun people, a lot of nice uh, race cars, and it's always fun to come play someplace and uh, have a lot of fun. Well, I'll tell you, we're going to keep an eye on this car. I, I'm very curious. Uh, I love sedan racing, uh, especially uh, in the, tra the old Trans Am series, and I got a feeling you're going to bring this car around this place. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's just great being here. Thanks for the interview. Hey, thank thanks you. a lot, Butch. You were great. Hey, He's going to take some pictures of the car. Okay. As we take a little cruise in the paddock, this Lime Rock Park Vintage Festival is just turning into something unbelievable. I mean, there's something here for everybody. And no matter where you look, you just... It's like being a kid in a candy store and not knowing what to pick first. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I want to thank the people at Lime Rock Park. They're just great hosts. And I hope everybody has enjoyed the show as much as we have producing it. It has been just one outstanding weekend here. And we always look forward to coming back. I can't stress enough to the viewers to, if they get a chance... Labor Day weekend to come on out and see what this event is all about. You will not be disappointed. And as you can see from the pictures, there's certainly a variety of cars. And believe me, there's something here for everybody. From open wheel cars to big bore sedans to you just about name it. It is here. We also want to mention that if there's a need for speed, you, there was a little uh, go-kart track set up on the midway, and the kids and grown-ups, as you could tell, were having a great time. It is just uh, something here for everybody. I don't care how old you are. It's just a great thing to come to. I hope everybody will return next week to our next episode of Racing Action Today.
This program is brought to you in part by Sal Cal Real Estate Connections. Thanks to the Race in Action Today crew, Dwayne Cody, Bill Majak, David Seidlinger, and Lisa Backus. And also, we want to thank our home station, Nutmeg TV, for all their support and all the great things they do. We want to thank R&M Recyclers Incorporated in New Britain, Connecticut for all their support and all the great things they do. And also we want to thank PBF, Prior Brothers Fabricating in Berlin, Connecticut for all their support and all the great things they do back at their shop. And last of all, we want to thank Just Results Weight Loss Center at their brand new facility in Plainville, Connecticut for all their support and all the wonderful things they do back at their shop. 